All right, all right. What's up, guys? Happy Monday. We are back uh, with a surprise. <laughs> we were talking about the Nurse Shark last week, and uh, change of plans have come up, uh, which I'll explain later as more people uh, come on to the chat. But tonight is a surprise shark. It's the Japanese Saw Shark, our first Saw Shark uh, we will ever talk about on the stream, uh, or we've ever talked about on the stream. So. Uh, so far, it looks like I don't see anybody on just yet, so um, I'll give everybody a couple minutes. Um, oh, nope, there's Roy Roy. What's up, man? Hey, yo, hello. How you doing? <laughs> Happy Monday. Um, this shark is a surprise. Uh, this this one has a longer and pointier nose than the one that we were talking about <laughs> last week, so... Um, which I'll explain in a little bit, but it's good to, good to have you on, so hope you had a good weekend. Um... Actually, I had, a, I had a pretty relaxing weekend. Uh, like I've been, I've been really busy the past couple weeks, and last week it was like the first time in a while I got to kind of like wind down and just like uh, chill out. So, um, did you do anything fun this weekend? Um, and by the way, we are listening to uh, Okami. Which, I've never played this game, but I've heard Akami is a very beautiful game, uh, drawing a lot, or I guess exclusively, on uh, Japanese art style. So um, so I thought it would be kind of fun to, to do for the uh, Japanese Saw Shark, so. Oh, uh, no worries. Yeah, hey, high five on that, as, uh, job searching. Like, uh, dude, keep at it, and like, just, just, like, high five on that. You know, it's, it's, uh, my, um... I have people like like in, in my personal life um, in, in a similar boat, so like I I, I got you, so so, um, and that's that's a good that's a good use of a weekend. That's a very productive weekend. So high five on that man. So, um, let's see. I think we'll <laughs> for sure for sure. Um, I think we'll slowly dive into this shark. And actually, um, just in case, uh, like well we I, oh if, if 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 everybody else uh, jumps on the chat later, I'll, I guess I'll explain later. So. Um, I uh, had a buddy of mine who's going to come on this week. Um, something uh, came up in his research, so we're going to bump the Nurse Shark to next week. Um, just in case something comes up again, uh, we'll probably have to have a safety shark, <laughs> like, in terms of just in case, just in case there's any surprises again, because, like, I was a little bit, I, I, I panicked a little bit. It's like, oh my gosh, what shark should we talk about? Um, and I thought this one would be a really cool one since it's a brand new order, so. But that's, but, um, I should be talking to, um, or having my buddy guest, uh, on the, uh, stream next week, so, um, we'll hopefully do the Nurse Shark then, uh, which I'm really excited about, but, um, but this guy uh, is really cool because tall sharks aren't talked about too too much. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so tall, tall sharks aren't talked about too 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 much, uh, and there's not a lot of material on them as far as like media goes. But uh, but that also kind of makes it really exciting. Um, I did find a really cool. Oh, that's a kami. I did find a really cool. Um, footage on this guy, so, um, man, I'm gonna go ahead and subscribe to Sweet Tooth 5, uh, because uh, Salt Shark stuff is really, really hard to find, I don't think, I don't think I've seen Salt Shark, Salt Shark like, footage like, anywhere, else. anywhere else, so, uh, this, uh, this is, is a, a really cool little, little, little clip, so let's, so let's go ahead and dive into this guy. this guy, so, so, um, um Salt Shark, Salt Shark's very, very different salt fish, um, they look kind of similar, and they have a sort of a similar life, like, habit, habit, but having that, having that. Rostrum, Rostrum um, um, or I guess like, I guess like, like predation strategy, strategy. Uh, but they're completely uh, different. They're completely different, uh, they're, they're completely different lines of animals, animals, animals uh, which uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into later. later. So this so is this a true is shark. shark. Um, the gills, um, the gills on, the on the sides of the head. The head. Um, so um, saltfish salt have their gills um, beneath them like rays, but the salt sharks have their gills on the side of the head. Um, and the teeth, I didn't know this uh, until today, uh, kind of preparing, the teeth are actually very needly. Um, they're very, they're much thinner on char saw sharks, um, the teeth on the rostrum, than sawfish. So, um, but this is like beautiful footage of this particular species. Um, and again, I, I've i never really seen, it's it's hard to find saw shark material anywhere. So, um, it's cool to see the dorsal fins are equal size. Um, like, like that's, uh, and actually proportionally they look pretty similar to the pectoral fins. The uh, pectoral fins are a bit larger, um, but it's, it's interesting seeing the first and do uh, second dorsal fin are equal in size. And there's basically no caudal, lower caudal lobe. Uh, let's, let's kind of rewind that and like go slowly. 
on it. It's a it's a cool looking shark. It's very in so many ways. Aside from like the saw, it very radical looking shark. So um, let's see. Let me go ahead and half speed that. Also, I'm I'm in such like a Zen mood that uh, probably I probably won't dive into the science too too much like 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 deep science too too much tonight. Uh, I, I think we're gonna stick with like kind of like the basics because this is a whole new order for me. Um, I don't really know too much about Pristia four forms, uh, so this is this is gonna be a lot of fun um, to kind of take a look at. Um, what you'll notice is that there is no anal fin, so that's kind of like dogfish or um, angel sharks. So, and I believe that would also make this a squalomorph. So, of those two major groupings of sharks, squalomorphs and galeomorphs, this would be a squalomorph. Um, but, that's yeah, really cool. Oh, buccal pumper. So he's sitting on the seabed and he's actively pumping water over his gills. So that's, that's how he um, continues to breathe, even though he's not swimming, uh, which is really cool. Um, it's interesting seeing how long those barbels are. And I can't tell... If this is the video or if this is the animal, um, those sun, those barbels kind of twitch in a way where it's like, I don't know if that's the current working against it or um, if it's something that the shark is doing actively. There's a little clip kind of, or there's a shot coming up where it, it does a lot of twitching and I, I can't really tell if that's a current or not. Huge eyes. And there we go. See, yeah, see how the barbel is like, like right there kind of twitching a little bit. I can't tell if that's really the current or if that might be... That might be the current. That might be the current if it's going back and forth. That might not be the shark. So... Um, but yeah, no real lower caudal lobe or it's like a very elongated lower lobe, which is really weird looking like compared to other sharks, especially sharks that live in shallow water. Like that's so strange. Um, like... Uh, the, the, the upper lobe, you know, looks more normal and has that, you know, that subterminal notch. But, like, the lower lobe is, like, a very smooth... It's almost not even existent, which is so interesting. Um, and I wonder why the shark's uh, evolution kind of went that way. And also, you can kind of see that this might come up later. As far as the body plan goes, it's very flat um, at, at the trunk. Like, like a very flat base. Um, like, like uh, it, it kind of, like... Um, What's, what's the word? Like wedges out um, to like a very flat base as opposed to like a rounded belly. So that's pretty interesting. It's it's like, I know the obvious thing is like the rostrum on this shark, but it's interesting to see like other, um... oh cool, yeah, yeah dogfish with lounge schnoot, yeah. <laughs> Long schnoot, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's actually, you know what's funny? Like even though that's like, uh, it, it sounds silly. That's actually not too far from the truth, really. Like, the eyes genuinely do remind me of a dogfish. Uh, the rest of the body plan is pretty similar to, like, those squaliforms, so, which is really cool. Um, but I was just saying, like, uh, in general, it's interesting, aside from, like, the um, obvious, like, the large uh, rostrum, um, it's interesting that there's, like, subtle parts of its morphology that are just a little bit different and a little bit unique as far as sharks go as well, so... Um, but it's a beautiful, um, beautiful species. So let's dive into, I was trying to find a good resource. And this is actually from the shark specialist group. This is kind of simple, but it's actually maybe the best resource I've seen in terms of kind of concise identif or identifying like what the differences are between sawfish and saw sharks. So, um, let me move my little icon. So. All right, do you know the difference between a sawfish, pristidae, and a soft shark, pristioforiforms? It's not helpful that they, <laughs> they're named similarly, but um, let's see. So saw shark habitat only lives in the ocean, usually kind of small. Uh, sawfish can be gigantic. Uh, seven meters is an enormous animal uh, for, what? Actually, is that like 21 feet? Wait a minute. Hold on, seven meters is enormous. Uh, that is 23 feet for uh, Americans. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, so sawfish get huge. Um, sawfish can live in mangroves and uh, freshwater rivers. I didn't really know that about them. It makes sense. Like on the Atlantic coast, uh, we do have sawfish in Florida. They're very rare and they're critically endangered, but we do have them. Um, we do not have salt sharks. Uh, I think salt sharks are exclusive. No, they're 
Uh, I was about to say they're exclusively Pacific, but I think there's actually a new species, um, the Bahamas saw shark. I think there is a new one um, that's that's here. We'll get into that later because I, I didn't really realize there's multiple saw shark species. So uh, saw sharks. Let's see. My saw is shaped like a long triangle with pointed tip. I have one barbel on each side of my saw. Looks like he has a mustache. Oh, I didn't notice that. So saw sharks have barbels. Sawfish don't. Did not know that. Um, and then the teeth on my saw are thin like needles. Um, and then for sawfish, uh, the teeth on the saw are wider and stronger. Um, that's actually pretty cool in a weird way. Like, okay, so these guys are so different size-wise. And like the little thin teeth for the sawfish might be good for like um, hitting, you know, like like whacking fish and like like um, kind of like sand tiger shark teeth, like like just spearing fish. But like it's interesting that the sawfish's rostrum has like broader triangle teeth because that reminds me of like a, a great white. And um, I wonder, but then again, it it wouldn't go after larger prey, would it? I mean, it would go after larger fish, but I don't know if it would go. Like basically, like I guess that that rostrum for sawfish is like huge bloody bat that like um maybe maybe it can help dismember slightly larger fish because this this would not go after like the prey items that a white shark would go after at all but i don't know i i i'm, I'm wondering if like the wide triangle i i guess what i say is like i'm wondering if the wide triangles help it um kind of dismember larger fish and then for the salt sharks the smaller <laughs> the smaller teeth help it uh get smaller fish Seven meters like great white size. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy how big it is. Um, also, what's really funny is like I'm going through this guide and as I'm saying that out loud, like sawfish and saw shark, it's actually still confusing. Like, like um, ideally it would be great if, I mean, I guess these are the best names we've got in, in English for these groups, but ideally it would be great to kind of give them more of a verbal distinct distinction because like I'm, I'm starting to get tongue tied in terms of uh, who's who, so. This is this is understandably confusing uh, when people get confused by these two two animals. So um, the biggest thing, and this is this is the trick I always learned, is that sawfish. Um, I mentioned that they have the gills on the underside of their head because they are a kind of ray. Um, I know they look very shark-like in a lot of different attributes, but they are truly a ray, um, and their head is fused to their fins. Um, this isn't really a great photo, or like a great drawing to illustrate that, but let me see if I can find a different one. Sawfish. There you go, you can s well, I don't know if that's even a great... It's, it's like, it's a continuous line. It's, it's kind of hard to illustrate. Um, that's actually not that bad. Maybe. So, this is a sawfish, which is a kind of ray. It's this continuous line to the fin, and then the gills are on the underside of the head, just like a skate or a stingray. Actually, even like the mouth, like like just like th th those are those are ray lips. But anyway, like every, everything does look like generally kind of like what stingrays look like, even though it has like the dorsal fin, um, like a shark, and even though it has like the tail, kind of like a shark. It's this this head feature is definitely a ray. Um, you know, ray-like animal. Whereas like, when you go back to the saw shark, the gills are on the side of the head, the fin is separate, distinctly separate, it's not this smooth line, it's like distinctly its own like appendage, I guess that's not the right word for that, but um, but uh, you, you can tell, you can tell, like when you look closely at, and, like, at those differences, you, you can you can see, you can see how the morphology is different, so. Um, but it is wild that these groups did diverge, and yet they do occupy such a similar niche in the sense that they both have these giant rostrums that are used to just whack fish, um, which is pretty wild uh, to, to kind of think about. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, people can't help themselves but keep calling a sawfish a saw shark. I hear it all the time in the aquarium. I, I'm, I, I feel you, I, I, I feel you on that. Like, um, when I was trying to find videos, uh, there's a lot of sawfish videos, but they're misnamed saw shark videos. And it's like, ah, oh my gosh, I get it. But it's also like, ah, oh, it's not right. <laughs> so I hear you on that. So, um, let's see. Uh, let me get out of this. 
da, da, da. let's go back to the thing. Um, uh, okay, I guess I guess that's it. Um, Ventral surface near my mouth. Gill slits behind the eyes. I guess I guess we kind of got the basic gist of it in terms of the differences. So there's another resource right here from Sharks and Rays Australia. So this is kind of cool. Um, and this is actually, this is a cool little graph uh, between the rostrums of the two animals where it's like the saw shark's on top. And, you know, as we established, a saw shark is a small, uh, smaller kind of animal um, and the teeth are very needly. And then this is really cool to juxtapose with the saw fish, which is a much larger animal. I, I really like how they have the 10 centimeters here to illustrate like, yeah, this is a completely different size class. Um, and it's kind of wild seeing like how wide those teeth are like yikes so oh sharks for kids by patty burke Shark uh, sharks for kids is really cool I've, I've i've met them a couple times they're very nice so um cool 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 uh, i'm just gonna kind of scan through this i didn't realize that she wrote that actually she's really cool um or sharks for kids i don't know if i met her specifically but sharks for kids is really cool um doo -doo 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 -doo. I think this is basically, um, oh, sawfish saws are lined with a number of teeth along both sides and a saw that vary in size of a number by species, uh, and number by species, but each one of these teeth are permanent, I meaning if they happen to lose one, it will never grow back. That is really interesting. Um, saw shark teeth are replaceable so sh saw shark teeth are just like you know i mean like normal teeth on a shark in a sense that it just constantly regrows but sawfish teeth are permanent that is so cool and i never knew that before dude that is awesome um let's see and then the barbels being exclusive i never knew that before either that the saw the saw sharks have the mustaches i never never knew that so all right um, let's see what else we got. Um, the mustache is thought to have a tactile function. I love this sentence. This mustache is thought to have a tactile function. That is, that is a great, great sentence in, in science. I love it. Um, meaning that they use them to feel... I'm not even being sarcastic. I, I genuinely love that. That is, that is a good sentence. Meaning that they use them to feel around the sand for food. So, that's pretty interesting. Um, we're talking about the size. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I would love to kind of see... Maybe if we have time tonight, uh, I'd love to kind of see like an evolutionary, um, like like a chart, like like an evolution, like when did these diverge? So um, interesting. So very very cool article. Uh, go sharks for kids. Uh, sharks for kids. Let me just do a shout out, like a proper shout out. They're very cool. I just want to show their website. They're they're very nice, and I like what they do. And um, yeah, just, uh, just want to do a shout out for Sharks for Kids. You guys are awesome and, uh, super, super cool. Actually, I might have done a shout out for Sharks for Kids on an earlier stream. I can't remember, but they're really fun. If you see this logo or if you see them, um, at a, at like something like SharkCon or, or other events, um, definitely check them out. They're very, very cool. So, all right. That's my little plug. <laughs> um, let's... I want to replay this and kind of read up on Sharks of the World to see uh, kind of... And I'll, I'll put this back to normal speed because I think the article on Sharks of the World is pretty um, light. But to see if there's anything else specific about this species. So uh, These guys like temperate continental shelves and upper slopes. Uh, 50 to uh, 1240 meters, so these can enter the midnight zone, which is kind of cool. Um, and it kind of makes sense, like like just kind of like the big eyes and um, being like a, a bottom dwelling animal. That kind of makes sense. Uh, feeds on small bottom fishes and crustaceans, pokes bottom with snout and barbels. Uh, viviparous, usually 12 pups per, per litter, very cool. Um, a utilized bycatch of many fisheries, particularly vulnerable to entanglement in gill nets. Meat consumed in Japan, 
rare throughout its range, possibly already depleted, kept in Aquaria for short periods. So, I think this shark is actually least concerned in the IUCN red list, so we should go ahead and check out their species profile, because um, like I, I, I think that's I think they're comparatively doing okay, but I'd love to kind of like see what specifically they might be facing. But cool animal. Mm -hmm. All right, Japanese. Yep least concern. So Japanese salt, salt shark. So these guys live. And also, by the way, Japan is an awesome area for sharks. Like, there's a lot of really cool species in Japan. And um, I wonder if we can find a Japanese shark guide. That'd be kind of cool. I'm just going to type this in for fun. Japanese shark guide. There's a, there's a lot of really beautiful biodiversity um, in Japan. And I probably can't find one. So... Uh, Species details and illustrations. Uh, deep dive to Osaka Aquarium. Uh, I might try this for fun. I don't know. Whale sharks. Because uh, the ones I'm thinking of are like whale sharks, um, Japanese bullhead sharks. Uh, I think there's a specific kind of rough shark in Japan. So. This looks like a really cool place, but this is not what I'm thinking. Okay. Oh, happy seal. <laughs> okay. We're, we're going to go back to the, the, to the red list. But anyway, Japan's a really cool place for sharks. A lot of really awesome biodiversity. Um, so it's cool to do a shark that is uh, named after this era. There's also a lot of shark research in Japan. Um, or a lot of shark research has come from Japan. A lot of species descriptions have come from Japan. Um, Mitsukurana... A once deny the goblin shark, I believe, is named like I, I believe Mitsukurna is a Japanese name, a Japanese origin name. So, um, but anyway, Korea, China. Let's see what's going on with this species. Assessment information in detail. So, because the book did mention that. <laughs> oh, awesome! Yeah, I uh, just read your comment. Uh, heard about them on socials. They're pretty sweet. They are, yeah, yeah. Like that, I, I love them. Like sharks for kids. Super, super cool group. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Endemic to Northwest Pacific. Do 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 do. Usually fifty to eight hundred meters. Do, 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 do. Likely retained in South Korea, China, and Taiwan. Uh, it is uncommon throughout its range and has a significant fraction of its range beyond the depth of fisheries and thus has significant refuge at depth. Oh, cool. Okay. There is no evidence of population decline. The species is not suspected to be close to reaching the population reduction th threshold. And the Japanese salt shark is assessed as least concern. This is really interesting. And, and like, like this is... the We've had a couple of streams where we've had, like, least concerned sharks, which is extremely encouraging because it's, like... Um, not, not to minimize, like, the actual problems facing sharks um and i'm i mean like we're we're, we're I, I guess where we all or most of us are because I, I know anya's on the west coast but um you me and howard and like like i think beth too we're, we're all on the east coast so um you know there's a lot of shark species here that are not doing well uh, and, and like they're you know cosmopolitan species shallow water species are facing a lot of fishing pressure and it's really refreshing to see more and more sharks that are like oh yeah there's a lot that are just they live so far down that you know humans can't really get to them or they they have such a you know quick reproduction cycle or they have like um such a cute little niche like the, the port jackson shark where he just like sits on the reef and like fishermen when they catch him like ah uh, all right you're gonna go back you know it's, it's just, it's refreshing to see that there's a lot of sharks that are okay, so, yeah. <laughs> um, especially with, like, uh, conservation, um, I know there's a lot of, like, doom and gloom in conservation in general, and it's just, it's it's especially refreshing to see that for sharks, you know, just, just in this day and age, where it's like, yeah, there's quite a lot that are, that are okay, so, um, it's very nice to see. Uh, let's see, population in detail? never really look at populations too too much so um 
Yeah, it's kind of uh, reiterating the same thing. A significant fraction of its range beyond the depth of fisheries, and thus has significant refuge at depth. Um, do, 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 do. Cool. Habitat and ecology in detail. Do, 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 do. In Japan, the species comes into shallow water in spring, then migrates into deeper waters in autumn. That's really cool. Um, I'm wondering why that might be in terms of pursuing prey or um, mating. I don't know. Uh, reproduction is viviparous with litter sizes of usually 12. Uh, nothing else is known of its biology. Ooh, so this is this will be a cool one to study. This is um, this species will be a fun one to explore for future shark scientists. Um, actually, salt sharks in general. I had I didn't know how many salt sharks existed. So we we if if this guy doesn't have a lot of information, we could just kind of briefly. Uh, take a look at like a purview of um, the Pristia foriforms in general because there's quite a few. There's, there's quite a few, uh, like quite a handful of salt sharks. Um, let's see. We don't need conservation actions, so yeah, I guess yeah. So they're 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 looking good. Um, don't really have a lot of information on IUCN because they seem to be okay and they're kind of mysterious. So uh, let's hop on over to fish base and see uh, what's going on there so um, let's see uh, Pristia four forms Pristia four days so it's one family uh, Pristio means to saw but the tree has a noun a saw and forest means bearer or carrier so this is one who c carries a saw that's really cool and Japonicus means Japan, so belonging to Japan. So very cool. The Japanese saw carrier. That's that's a cool Latin name. So and it's actually interesting um, that the rays are pristio or pristidae, uh, where it's coming from the same uh, word, the same Greek word, which is saw. So I guess that's why they're named so similarly, because we're talking about the obvious feature, which is the the, the rostrum, like the saw. So. Um. Let's see. I don't know a lot about saw sharks in terms of like how you would distinguish a species. I'm assuming it's going to be a mix of the tooth count um, and then the proportion of these lengths. So I won't I won't harp too too much on that. I wonder if we can get like a saw shark guide. Um, well, let's see if we can find that saw shark identification guide. Uh, oh, wait, what is this? This is not exactly what I wanted, but I do want to see what this is. The Bahamas Saw Shark. So this is kind of closer to, to where I am. This is kind of interesting. That, okay, sorry, I'm going to cheat. What is this? <laughs> the Bahamas Saw Shark. Um... I think this is talking about salt sharks in general, this little passage. Oh, no, never mind. Uh, Slender shark with very long, narrow, tapering rostrum. That's interesting that you've got this like weird little bump or this weird little um, broadening on this species. And then when you compare it to our species, Japanese salt shark, it doesn't really look like it has that. Let's see if I can get a still from that video. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it has that. That's a beautiful animal. Um, trying to get a good... Oh, there we go, yeah. Beautiful view. Yeah, it doesn't really have that. And it also looks like it's, its rostrum is very short compared to this cousin. This is interesting. Um, oh my gosh, okay, this guy, this Bahamas salt shark, uh, lives between... 438, oh, never mind, never mind, uh, 438 to 952 meters, so this is like a twilight zone shark, um, but, so the Japanese salt shark has a bigger depth range, very cool, uh, no, behavior is unknown, okay, back to species, what is this, Shark Research Institute, this is a cool website, oh, this is a really cool website, whoa, wait a minute, 10, spe uh, 10 species overall. Okay, awesome. So that's still that's that's more than I thought there were. Um, 
Good, good, good call on that. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't realize it was that biodiverse actually. Um, this is a really cool. Uh, I'm kind of getting off the train a little bit. <laughs> like, I, I, I'll come back to our, our shark. I'm just a little bit curious what what's going on here. Is this? Oh, this is just like a general website. I thought this was like a specific region. So never mind. This is a cool website, Shark Research Institute. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, let's see if I could if we can get those species. Um. I kinda wanna look, cause that saw fish. Let's take a look at sawfish just for fun. Uh, this is not what I'm looking for, but I am a little curious about this. And it's also kind of a nice, you can kind of, it's a nice way to kind of illustrate, like the head is fused to the fins. This, this looks almost really distinct, but it's kind of like, you could sort of tell. Let's see, there's a small tooth sawfish. This lives in uh, Florida. The large tooth sawfish, I think this also lives in Florida. Global? Okay. Uh, dwarf sawfish. Green longcomb sawfish. That one looks like it has a really nasty rostrum. That looks really scary. The narrow knife tooth sawfish. Oh man, look at those fins look pretty distinct. This is definitely a salt fish, but those fins look pretty distinct. That's that's an interesting animal. All right, um, let's go back. Let's see if we can get some salt sharks. Salt fishes of the world. Oh, here we go. That's cool. Here we go. This is from the Great Tome. I appreciate that this is a preview from <laughs> Sharks of the World. So we got something. This is exciting. So, all right, let's see uh, what this is. Um, Bahamas shark, uh, saw shark has sharper fins too out of all of them. Cool, oh, cool, I didn't notice that. Um, I, wanna, I kinda wanna go back to that now. Uh, and I, I still have this tab over here, so I could, we, can, we can come back to that tab. Um, I think I was going back on this. Bahama Salt Shark, aha! Ooh, nice! Good call! Good call, Royal Roy! Yeah, look at that. You've got kind of more of like a little falcate curve here. And then a little bit of a point here, but definitely, definitely here. You can definitely see the difference where it's like... This fin is more straight. This kind of reminds me of the difference between like a, uh, a sandbar shark and a bull shark. Like a sandbar shark has like a broad fin, kind of like this guy. And then a bull shark has more of like a curve, kind of like, like more of a falcate, kind of, kind of getting there curve. So good call. That was really cool. All right, so we got this Bahamas saw shark, the Japanese saw shark, and then a bunch of cousins. So we've got, oh, and actually the Japanese saw shark is included on this. So we can actually see directly like what kind of makes these guys different. So, all right, I'm just gonna take a cup of tea. <laughs> hope, you, hope you've got a cool snack. I've got black tea. I was actually munching on some mochi um, uh, earlier, which is kind of funny, but <laughs> like, um, it was really good. I actually hit the spot. But, um, Saw sharks, slender distinctive sharks, flat head, long, flat saw-like snout with long ventral barbels and close set rows of lateral and ventral saw teeth, large spiracles, thick lateral ridges on caudal peduncle. Okay, so that's that's probably what I was trying to describe earlier. Um, I think the vid this video had the best example of it. Just want to see if we can get a good shot. Well, yeah, like this. This is what I was talking about. Um, I didn't have the right words for it, but lateral ridge. So this is really distinct, um, and it's kind of it's really interesting how flat the belly is. Um, uh, there's a really there we go there we go. That's kind of a good angle, like. There we go. See how like prominent that is? That's really cool. So lateral ridge. Okay, that's that's the right term for that. 
Ah, there we go. There we go. That's a good angle on that. Yeah, that that is really prominent. That's, which I'm sure like helps this guy, I guess, when he's like sitting on the seabed. But that that is, it, it's interesting how pro. It's it, it strikes me how prominent that is. So, very interesting. Um, and I think in these illustrations, you can see it right here. You can see it here. You can kind of, yeah, you can see it here. I, I, yeah, right here. Look at that. Like, like, just kind of like this. That's an interesting feature. Um, it's like, it's cool finding like little subtleties like that on sharks where, um, yeah, yeah, uh, lateral ridges um, like that uh, aren't common with most sharks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I think you're absolutely right. Like, it's, it's, it, I love like how this, this species, it has like that distinct saw, but then it has like the, those like little subtle subtleties. Um, all throughout, this is our 16th stream we've, we've ever done, but like, all throughout, we, we've been learning, like, as we kind of like, smash all these sharks together, and like, as we're going through all of them, we're, we're it's cool kind of developing like, an eye for like, oh my gosh, like, there's, we're, we're starting to kind of like, piece together, like, these little differences, or these little things that kind of make them truly distinct species like we're picking up on nuances which is really cool i and like i and obviously i never knew before like i never knew and like I've, I've immersed myself in sharks like basically all my life and i never knew some of these like small details um between species so it's been extremely cool um so yeah <laughs> sandbar shark dorsal fins are no joke yes they are very superlative i i love those sharks are awesome like those are uh they're pretty uh common here um and they're sort of like the classic shark i would actually say if i ever had a if i had to pick like an ambassador shark of virginia i would probably pick the sandbar shark to be honest like like it's it's such a uh, common species here um it's a very charismatic species as far as shark research from virginia um is like 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 that's I, I would say sandbar shark is pretty uh, and actually for a lot of the southeast atlantic sandbar shark's pretty important so um, and so one of the first sharks that received uh, some kind of protection, as far as, like, research protection, like, uh, you, you could still, I think you could technically sort of, they might have changed the rules, but you can technically sort of still fish for them-ish, if only if you're doing research. Um, otherwise, you can't take them. So, um, but it's one of the first sharks that ever received that kind of attention or protection, so, which is pretty cool. But anyway, here we go. So a couple, a couple of saw sharks... So Anna's six skill shark, saw shark. I wonder how, how that was named. Um, Zanzibar, but it also may occur in Kenya or Somalia. Okay, this is interesting. So this this shark lives in shallow water, 20 to 35 meters, uh, epi epipelagic sunlit zone. Um, we don't know much about it. So that's number one. Number one is the Anna's. Um, Really cool pectoral fin. That's a really uh, sharp looking and uh, pretty big pectoral fin. So cool, cool, cool. Um, that's a cool name. Number two is Kaja's six skill sh saw shark. So Madagascar and Mascarene Ridge. Um, this one is Twilight Zone, 214 to 320 meters. Um, that's actually pretty cool. Very sharp looking fins. Uh, Kind of looks. I don't know. I don't know if I'm just like going with it, or if that the eye looks deep water to me. But I might. I might be just kind of influenced by what I just read. But it does. It does look like like if you told me the shark lives in a twilight zone, that, is, that would not surprise me. That that looks that looks spot on. So, um, let's see. Oh, I just noticed this. This is interesting. So there's two genera here. There's a uh, pliotrema. So these three, one, two, and three, are Pliotrema, and then Pristiophorus. So these two, including our Japanese saw shark, are Pristiophorus. That's actually interesting. I wonder what the differences are. Let's see if we can spot the differences. Um, I'm noticing that maybe Pristiophorus has kind of like a wider body plan, because this guy, these Pliotremas are more narrow um i feel like maybe the obvious difference is the six skills so um 
Do these really have, I'm assuming they do have six skills, since that's her name. One, two, three, four, five, six. Versus one, two, uh, wait, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So, I would assume the six skills versus the five skills is the biggest difference between the, gen the genera. So, um, oh, first real shark you've seen is the sandbar shark. Awesome. Yeah. Six skills. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, all right. Awesome. I was like, <laughs> good, good call. Cause it's like, it's really funny. Like the first thing I was trying to find was like the body plan, and I totally overlooked for the first few seconds the gills, like the number of gills. So even though they were in the name, so but that's really cool. I never, I didn't know there were two, two genera for for saw sharks. So awesome, awesome. Um, Warren's six gill saw shark, South Africa to southern Mozambique. That's actually interesting. These Pliotermas live in live in Africa. Um, that's pretty interesting. So, um, and also, can we talk about, like, how this is a, like, oh, shoot, sorry, I almost, I almost pushed a bad button. Um, sometimes when I, <laughs> when I click over to the chat, um, uh, unfortunately, there, there's, like, a star icon, which is great, and then there's, like, a band viewer icon, which is bad, and I, I, I get, like, like, very close to that on accident, so sorry. That's that's why I freaked out just now. I'm like, no, no. Like, Roy, Roy is core cast, permanent member. Like, sorry. So, um, but anyway, um, what was I going to say? I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, six skills. So, isn't it really cool that, like, we're, like the famous six skill sharks are, like, the Hexanchi forms, but, like, th this is a completely different order, and these sharks have six skills like like i thought that was actually unique to a form so it's really cool to see a completely different group of or a completely different order of sharks with six skills that's just that's really wild so that's that feature is not unique to Hexanchiforms. forms it's really cool um let's see so there we go so we got one major difference between these groups so if you ever see a saw shark in the wild and you're trying to identify it the, the number of gill slits is a really helpful way to parse it down. So let's see the differences between the long nose saw shark, Pristiophorus serratus, and the Japanese saw shark, Pristiophorus japonicus. So let's see. Zero to 630 meters for the long nose, and then 50 to 1240 meters for the Japanese saw shark. So it looks like the Japanese saw shark has a bigger range. Both are described as stocky. Um, and it looks like the long nose saw shark has less teeth on the rostrum than the Japanese saw shark. So the long nose saw shark has 9 to 15 teeth in front of the barbels, and then 9 to 10 teeth behind the barbels. Whereas the, long, or the Japanese saw shark has 25 to 32 teeth in front of the bar, barbels and 8 to 6 teeth behind the barbels. Um, barbels much closer to the mouth than the rostral tip. And then for the long nose saw shark, the barbels are closer to the tip than the mouth. Interesting. Okay. Um, color is usually not good way i mean like color works i guess like I, I i'm used to not using color as a way to kind of tell species apart but pale yellow blotches bars brown reddish brown yeah like they're it, it really is going to be the positioning of the barbels and then the number of teeth so our salt shark the japanese salt sorry the japanese salt shark has a lot more teeth and the barbels are closer to the mouth so that's pretty cool so mm -hmm. Um, yeah, rocking the sex skill fashion. Yeah, let's. I would come to see some pictures of Plyoterma now. I'm, I'm, I'm like really curious. Plyoterma. Um, sure. Let's do shark references. I trust that. So there are some interesting drawings. Look at. Actually, yeah, here we go. Good diagnostic drawings. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's wild. I think I have our shark here too. Oh, that's a preserved specimen, but I don't. I don't know if you'd be able to see. Yeah, that's too. That's too faint. Um, also, I don't. I like diagnostic pictures, not really. 
Oh, oh, I always do this on this website. I don't really always do this on this website. Okay, I can't zoom in because I always make the website explode, but one, two, three, four, five. Cool, so our Soul Shark has, clearly has the five gills. And then Plyterma has got those six gills, which is like right before the fin. It's such a unique feature. It's actually really cool to be kind of like slowly looking at this with the music. Yeah, I'm just having a moment to zen. I'm like, that is super cool. All right, that was fun. And you can see the gills approaching to the side of the head. So just confirming that this is a saw shark. It is interesting how smooth that mouth is with with like just um, the base of the body. That 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 looks so much like a ray right there. Um, and actually, when you really look at that, what a weird positioning, like the mouth and the eye, like, like, and how small that space is. These are so wild, you know? Like, when you think of, like, fossil sharks, like, um, is it heli, helicopria, uh, what is that? What, what, what's the one with, like, the weird, um, um, helix, like, like, with the teeth? Heli, helicoprion, um. Saw shark is yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 it's, 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 it's cool. cool. Actually, actually, actually uh, I just saw your comment to Rocks from Peter, so it's actually really cool, guys, that, really cool guys, that, um, uh, uh, the reason, the reason for this, which I never knew, is because they are they in place, so it's like, this one, this one doing fine, fine, um, but it looks like it's a little teeny, but they just, like, that's like an area of high impact, and, and, you know, they saw a lot of action, so just teeth are teeth out, and the ones are going to place, like, like, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool, because it might be, it might be, like, and it could be wild, wild, it could be, like, the, like, some of these teeth are naturally larger than others, but it could also, also, maybe be an indicator of, like, wearing tear, in terms of, like, what parts of the rostrum are, you know, most used, or, like, hitting fish most often. I don't know. So, and either way, like, as far as, like, the, this organization goes, I, I, I feel like it might have to do also just, I, I, I definitely think it might have to do with, like, how the teeth are, like, knocked out, so. Helicoprion. Okay, awesome. Let's go look at Helicoprion, because, like, when you think of, when you first think of Helicoprion, you think that's a weird shark that that is like there's no way this thing could exist um like like with this kind of dentition like this is the strangest looking thing right also i think i think if we run out of salt shark stuff uh because this is such a rare species we might have to pivot to like some a helicopterion bonus bonus night so but when you look at this thing this is the strangest looking animal and you would think this doesn't make any sense and this wouldn't work but then when you look at like you know a living modern shark i mean this is wild like if, if you had like paleontologists millions of years in the future digging this up they would think this is probably very strange you know so it's kind of cool comparing with a shark that today we think is like just bananas you know actually that's a really cool look at this this is a really cool uh illustration of this ancient shark uh, damn that is okay yeah we might we might have to do a helicopterion R roy what do you think of a helicopterion bonus night i don't know we might we might have to go into the species because it's kind of interesting so oh i don't think helicopterion confirmed to be a shark either Ooh, wait a minute all right that's wild is this like a proto shark um, or a completely different group. Let's let's see. We're gonna take a helicopterion break because I'm now okay. Shark like. Uh, let's start with Wikipedia and find a source, and that will take us to where we need to go. Uh, shark relative, Science, NBC News, Journal of Paleontology. Let's go to the Journal of Paleontology, but we can't go there. Okay, we're forbidden. Uh, a PDF? No. Okay. Um. Actually, do you think? I wonder if this is on SharkReferences.com. 
even though it's a proto shark, I'm kind of curious. Um, extinct. Let's just say all, just in case. Um, let's see. Helicoprion. Oh, there we go. Okay, Helicoprion. Oh, there's a couple. Wow. There's actually quite a few. Uh, let's click on this one, because this one has some references on it. Uh, oh, kidding. Okay, maybe let's do Extinct Valid, um, just in case that might be throwing me off. Okay. Oh, that was a valid species. Okay. All right. Looks like, looks like that's not a lot of stuff. Um, I wonder. I guess, I guess, let's see what Wikipedia says really quickly. So, Wikipedia is saying, and we'll we'll cross reference this. Uh, Helicoprion is an extinct genus of shark-like uh, eugenodont fish. Okay, almost all fossil specimens are spirally, spirally arranged clusters of individual teeth called tooth whorls, which in, in life were embedded in the lower jaw. It is a kind of cartilaginous fish. Do, 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 Permian period. Um, so this is just a Permian uh, period shark. Using our handy fossil chart, we've got... Oh, hey, this is Elise Edits. Welcome to the stream. So... <laughs> Um, we're a small but fun community, so you're welcome to, uh, ask any questions about sharks. Uh, we're taking a look at an ancient species called, uh, Helicoprion. Um, or I guess, I guess not an ancient shark species. Oh, I think she might have gone away. Oh, well. <laughs> so, yeah, she, she might, oh no, I guess, I don't know, my counter might be kind of going in and out. Anyway, so Permian period, this is 252 million years ago. So this, this guy, uh... This guy is super, super ancient. Um, let's see what else we got from this. Closest real living relatives to the Helicoprion are the Chimeras, though their relationship is very distant. That's really interesting. Um, chimeras are not talked about too much in pop culture, but like these are such, these are so interesting. Like these, these are bizarre. Um, they're sometimes called ratfish or ghost sharks. Um, they're not sharks at all, but um, you can still kind of tell the relationship between, um, like, like, like this kind of group and sharks and rays, even though it looks fish-like, um, just like the cartilaginous body, um, the cartilaginous fins, um, just the general look of the species. Or sorry, this group of animals. Um, you can just kind of tell that, yeah, this is not anywhere near a bony fish. This is kind of its own thing. So it's cool that Helicoprion is kind of more closely related to this group than actual um, like modern sharks. So very interesting. Um, and also when you think about like some of the features of these guys, like I know some chimeras have like, I'm pretty sure they have like their um, mating organs on their head, which is really strange. <laughs> um, like. I don't know. It makes Helicoprion, this kind of animal, not that radical when you really think about it. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, let's see what else we got on this thing. Um, da, 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 da. The unusual tooth arrangement is thought to have been an adaptation for feeding on soft body prey. It may function as a deshelling mechanism for hard boiled cephalopods such as nautiloids and andoids. Interesting. All right. Um, Oh, we got helicopter. Oh, we got helicopter on Canada, um, and then United States, Idaho, Nevada, Wyoming, Texas. So just like Midwest, interesting. So, all right. I wonder if um, our favorite, our best friend, fossilguy.com. I wonder if he has some stuff on helicopter. I'm a little curious. Um, I think more people are jumping on, so, uh, what's up guys? Uh, welcome to our stream. Uh, it's pretty chill, it's not really, um, if anybody's new here, uh, it's not a lecture, it's more, it's genuinely like a study party, so, I uh, hope you, hope you, um, you could just put this on in the background, uh, while you're working on something, you're welcome to ask any questions about sharks in general, or marine biology in general, so, 
Um, and we're hopping around between modern and fossil sharks. So um, let's see fossilguy.com. I don't know if he has like a search feature. I don't think he does. He's got a lot of cool stuff though. Um, do, 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 do. Oh my gosh. I don't know if he has a search feature on the bottom or something. No. Um, let's do helicoprion fossilguy.com. Yeah. And then Bloom might jump off the train because it's not really. Oh, here we go. Oh, that's perfect. Prehistoric sharks. There we go. All right. Shark origins and evolution. Helicoprion. Okay. So here's an actual Helicoprion fossil, but it's not a shark. It's close to a shark. Okay. Here we go. So, they're mentioning the Golden Age, so I kind of want to, I kind of want to read this. Let me take a sip of tea really quick. Okay. So, the Devonian time period ended with a major... <laughs> Canada's got uh, buzzsaw ghost sharks. Yes. <laughs> Dude, Canada's a cool place. Canada's got a lot. Like, like lots of cool animals living, li living and extinct. So... Uh, Devonian time period ended with a major mass extinction around 374 million years ago. One of the many casualties of this mass extinction was the placoderms armored fish. So I, I think those are the crazy, like, was it Dunskeletus? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Crazy animals, like really scary. But armored fish were the prevailing class of fish. Placoderms included Devonian's top predator. The Oh, there it is. Yeah. 20 foot long. Dunkleos Dunkleosteus. Okay, Dunkleosteus. I got. I mispronounced it. Dunkleosteus. Whatever. The extinction of this top class of predators left a large ecological hole. Immediately afterward, in the Carboniferous period, sharks seized the opportunity and became the top predators. The Carboniferous, uh, Pennsylvania, and Mississippian epochs marks the high water mark for sharks. Although the Carboniferous is known for its huge coal forest and the radiation of amphibians, it is also known as the Golden Age of Sharks. I did not know that about that period. So Carboniferous is 299 million years ago, or no, 359 million years ago to 299 million years ago. Cool. Um, I am so glad we, we, we installed our fossil shark timeline on, on our heads up display. It's very handy for this, so. <laughs> um, Excellent preserved specimens from this golden age came from limestone beds in the Heath Shale Formation, which is one of the Mississippian epoch 318 million years ago. A famous limestone bed in this formation is called the Bear Gulch Limestone, found in Fergus County, Montana. Ooh. That actually, I think I saw that. Oh, there's a, there's a really good fossil documentary on YouTube. Um, and it actually involves, um, I forget his name, and he's a really, shoot, he's a really famous artist from the Pacific Northwest. He was actually trying to draw Helicoprion. Um, I forget his name. I, I wish I could remember it. Um, if it comes to me, I'll just shout it. But anyway, this Lagerstadt, if you're a geologist, let me know what that is, contains one of the most uh, diverse fish assemblages. It includes over 65 species of remarkably well-preserved sharks. Some specimens even have skin pigments and internal organs preserved. <laughs> That's insane. Um, oh, whoa. Okay. Uh, during this golden age, sharks were at their highest diversity. There's a profuse amount of families, genera, and species. They came in all shapes and sizes, from a few inches to over 20 feet. Some lived in fresh water, while others lived in salt water. Some were beginning to look like modern sharks, while others took unique, highly specialized forms. Some examples include the large world tooth shark Helicoprion. So he's saying it's kind of like a shark, but I, I believe, I do believe the idea that this is its own thing. It, it kind of branched off to become something else and then it went extinct. Um, I, I, so it's maybe, maybe it's a proto shark, I guess we'll call it proto shark, which had replacement teeth arranged in spirals. The shark, uh, Balencia montana, looked more like a fancy tropical aquarium fish than the shark. The entire Stenacanthus genus had a large anvil-shaped dorsal fin, unlike anything that exists today. The Carboniferous was true of the Golden Age of Sharks. Um, that's crazy. Uh, this is the shark Falcatus Falcatus from the Carboniferous. Cool. Um, is this a shark? No. 
This fossil shark tooth. What? This is a shark. Wow. Uh, uh, Glickmanius occidentalis. Wow, that is a weird looking tooth. Um, wow, Permian. Uh, Orthocanthus shark fossil. That's really wild to look up. This is amazingly well preserved. So, sorry. I can never uh, <laughs> pronounce... Yeah, I got it wrong. Um, kind of fun fact, like, um, when I was a kid, uh, I mean, I, I love Pokemon, um, and uh, Nidoran was one of the first Pokemons, but I always called it Nidron. Um, and then, like, whenever we fought the Elite Four, I would always say Elite Four. I don't know why. I would miss the letters. But same with uh, I, I, Dunkle Dunkleosteus. Same with Dunkleosteus. I... <laughs> I can't, I can't get that down, so. Um, let's see. So, I don't want to get too, too far off the rails, but, um, and I forget how I got onto Hell the Caprion, but, like, I guess all of this to say, saw sharks are strange, <laughs> but, like, appropriately strange. Like, because evolution has shown a lot of different forms of shark-like animals, and, as far as evolutionary history goes, this is not the strangest thing that has ever existed. So, um, which is kind of cool, uh, just just in perspective. But anyway, let's go back to. I didn't know. Yeah, I did not know. So, Helicoprion. Um, thank you for enlightening me, uh, by the way, Roy, because I, I didn't know it was a a it, it's its own thing. I didn't realize it was, which makes total sense. I didn't realize it was like a proto shark or kind of like a, a complete. It's a cousin, but it's its own thing. So, um, which is cool. It's now now we know. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's. I think we left off as far as the Japanese salt shark goes on fish base. Let's see if fish base has anything new on this guy. Um, kind of more of the same. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, kind of more of the same. Since it is a rare animal, uh, there's not a lot of material. Let's see if there's any... Okay, this is kind of cool. So we have... One, uh, this is this is not a living specimen, but this is a... Um, oh, well... Actually, maybe it is a living specimen. Yeah, maybe that that's okay. Um, the coloration doesn't look good on it. Like, like, it looks like it's not doing so well. But we've got this kind of diagnostic photo of him. Got a cool stamp. That's actually really pretty. Very nice. Um, hmm. But it's kind of amazing how uh, mysterious and rare these are. Um, let's see if sharkreferences.com has any interesting research. And if not, I might, we might wrap this up early because it's like um I'm, I'm glad i'm glad we took time to look at uh saw sharks because like this is a group i don't know I, I didn't really know too too much about but um it is kind of fascinating to see how little information there is on them so let's see bioluminescent sharks uh conservation priorities i think we did look at that one um labial cartilage uh, distinct responses to long-term global change. Ooh. Let's see if we... X-ray computed tomography library of shark anatomy. This might be kind of interesting. Sometimes studies like this do have, like, full X-ray models of sharks. We'll see if we can maybe get that on this guy. So, let's see. Um, anvil head shark, yeah. <laughs> There is one, um, I forget what species this is, but there is a fossil shark that functions like a flying fish. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, oh shoot, what is this called? 
And it's, it's, it's a tiny little shark, it's a tiny little guy, but it does have a similar function to flying fish where it's, it's um, like fins kind of open like wings and it's believed that it like, trying to avoid prey, it leaps out of the water um, and kind of like flies to, uh, oh, here we go, here we go. So, um, it's, it flies to avoid danger. Okay, so this is not our species, but this is really cool. Um, okay. So let's check out what this what study is about. We'll, we'll take a look at the, the scans really quickly. Um, can I X out this ad? I don't want this ad. Okay, I guess Victoria's Secret's back. All right, here we are. <laughs> the cranial diversity of sharks, oh, it went away, all right. Uh, the cranial diversity of sharks reflects disparate, <laughs> The cranial diversity of sharks reflects disparate biomechanical adaptations to feeding. In order to be able to investigate and better understand the ecomorphology of extant shark feeding systems, we created an X-ray computed, computed tomography CT library of sharks cranial anatomy with three-dimensional 3D lower jaw reconstructions. This is super cool. This is used to examine and quantify lower jaw disparity in extant shark species in a separate study. The library is divided in a data set comprised of medical CT scans of 122 sharks, uh, representing 73 extant species, including digitalized morphology of entire shark specimens. The CT data set and additional data provided by other researchers was used to reconstruct a second data set containing 3D models of the lower left jaw for 153 individuals representing 94 extant shark species. These data sets form an extensive anatomical record of shark skeletal anatomy necessary for comparative morphological, biomechanical, ecological, and phylogenetic studies. Lots of words, but this is going to be awesome. So, um, and what is this called? X-ray computed tomography library of shark anatomy and lower jaw surface models by Pepijan uh, Kaminga. Kaminga is a, um, I've read a couple Kaminga papers. This is, this is a name I've seen multiple times, actually. Um, so, uh, Paul W. D. Bruin, uh, Jacob Jelangs, uh, Jelangen. I'm so sorry, Jacob Jelangens. I'm very bad at language, and I apologize. Martin D. Uh, Brazil. So, and this is from sci Scientific Data. So here we go. Let's skip over to kind of what this is about. This is extremely cool. Um, so this is a kind of angel shark, Squatina, oh, this is THE angel shark, Squatina, Squatina. This is the one that lives in Europe, and this is a 3D model. Um, when each slice mask is superimposed on the lower left jaw, 3D model is calculated based on the mask. The black line through the 3D model indicates the location of the tomogram. Interesting. So a 3D model of an angel shark, I think, um, like... So what's really cool, um, 122 scan. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited because I think there is a way, a long time, a couple years ago, I stumbled across something where you can get 3D um, models of sharks, like, like, but the shark skeletons. I stumbled across something like that. I wonder, I hope this is it, but yes, 3D printing that jaw. Um, actually, uh, Roy, I was checking out your channel. Do you do 3D, and not, not to put it in the spot, do you, th but do you do 3D modeling or 3D animation? Um, I thought I saw that on your channel. I could be, I could be wrong. So not, not, not to put you on the spot. You, you can say no comment if, if I'm like really putting you on the spot, but, um, or you, you don't have to say anything, but I was just kind of curious. Um, cause if you do like these, these would be kind of cool. Um, oh. Oh, wait, 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 okay. The CT scan data can be loaded into 3D analysis software such as the free software package Spears. Oh, shoot, okay. Oh, did I use, find this somewhere? Damn it. Okay, so I had a, I, I'm using like a MacBook right now, but I had a different computer couple years ago that had we we had um, it was a work computer and we did have a 3d printer and we needed special software to um purport like how do you say this like get the right proportion of the 3d model in the right space so that it, it 3d prints accurately and like we don't print anything too small or too large so um 
So I think I might have kind of maybe used that for shark purposes. <laughs> I didn't print anything shark related, but I might have visualized things. I forgot that this may need, um, you might need something for this. Although I think you can, hold on. Metadata... no. I honestly think you can visualize this online. I, I mean, I mean, like, like, or like on the on the web, uh, just on the web. You don't need. I don't. I don't think you need a download software to do this. Actually, um, full size image. I'm just. I, I don't know if that's what I just saw. That's what I just saw. Okay. Let's see. A dot .ply file. Okay. Full size table. This is not it, but I just I just kind of want to see the name of our shark. Oh, actually, the name of all of these sharks. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is really cool. This is kind of like this is kind of like Jurassic Park when um, Nedry is like taking the embryos. This like the list of the species. So here we go. So we got salmon shark, Lambda Ditropus, Lambda Nasus, the poor beagle, Carcodon Cricarius, the white shark, Isaurus Oxyricus, Mako, uh, short fin Mako, Isaurus Parkus, long fin Mako. Ooh, Centrosciamus Celalepis. I should know that one. That's a um, the black dogfish. I don't know which one that is actually. Um, oh, cool. I did do some animating for a bit, but I used to pretty finicky hardware during that time. It was annoying. Don't have any 3D modeling experience, so... No worries. Like, like, any animation, um... I, I'm, like, I was doing, like, um... Part of my weekend... I mentioned at the top of the, uh, the stream that I had a relaxing weekend. I had a really nice, um, art night uh, with a friend of mine, and, uh, we're both really into animation, um... And, like, we especially love, like... I mean, like, this sounds cliche, but, like, Disney animation. And, um, we were trying to like emulate that process and it, it's just 2d but it's so difficult so i can't i can't imagine 3d like that's like like hats off to you for, for doing 3d animation at all because it's like that 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 is pretty mind-blowing like like to me like how difficult it is even in the 2d space i think i think animation is really like you have to be really talented to to accomplish that so it's really cool um cephaloscelium is a swell shark Stegosoma is a zebra shark, right? I don't know. I'm having fun with this. I'm just gonna. I, I won't read everybody, but I'm just gonna. Uh, Galaxido cuvier is a tiger shark. We got Pseudocarcarius camarhari, which is a crocodile shark. Mitsukurna, goblin shark. There's a lot of great sharks here. Hammerheads. Reservoir. Oh, our sharpnose shark. Negaprion lemon sharks. There's a lot of cool sharks here. This is awesome. Our saw shark's not on this list. Did I miss it? No? Why? Why? He's not on this list. Is it, is it no, there's no model of the saw shark? There's a lot of models of awesome sharks, in which we're, we're going to definitely try, try to find. But I guess... Uh... Oh, here we go. Yeah. Sample characteristics. Pristiforus japonicus. So this is the only time where this is mentioned. So, okay. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, and this is, this is going to close out the night. Because um, I know uh, this shark is so rare that um, I don't think we're going to get any more information on him. So what we're going to attempt to do, if this sounds cool, is we're going to attempt to um, get a 3D model of a shark jaw. I think it is possible, but let's see. Uh, I think I thought this is possible to do without software. Um, CT scan data can be, okay, so the CT scan data and DICOM format can be loaded really don't want to get free software on my computer, but I thought this was a... Th oh, is this a thing? VG Studio Max, is this a thing? 
Can be produced and exported in various formats using one of these software packages. I don't really want to download something, but hmm, the landmark editor is a free software package, well suited for placing landmarks in 3D models. Mesh Lab, what does that do? This is unwise, by the way. I should not be clicking on things randomly when it comes to anything online, but I'm, I am having fun with this. Open source system for processing and editing 3D triangular mes mes meshes. So, And please uh, stop me or, or shout out if I'm... Um, oh, Crocodile Shark is such a <laughs> chihuahua of a shark. Yeah. <laughs> um. I was just going to say, uh, please uh, shout out or, or stop me if I'm missing something. Um, this is, is kind of like a video game. Like, if, if there's something that I'm missing in a puzzle. Uh, let's see. Mesh Lab, new features. I don't want to download something because I thought there's a way to do this online. Like, on a cloud or something. Like, that's... I feel like I'm... I really don't want to download something. I, I just... Um, you know what? Let's see if we could just kind of find this in the dumb old-fashioned way. I'm a little curious. Visual, um, 3D shark model visualizer. I'm just kind of curious. Uh, these look cool. This is not 3D, this is a 3D shark jaw model visualizer. Those are cool though. This is maybe not what we're looking for, but like... Did we see this already? We, this, the make a shark jaw? Oh, actually, wait, 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 wait. I think, I think we saw the, th the Mako Shark Jaw already on a different stream. No, you need software. I think you need software to actually view the models. Okay, gotcha. All right. Um, let's... Sorry, not a, not a jaw. What is this, though? What is this? What is this? What is this? Oh, whoa, what is this? Whoa! Okay, that's really weird. Does it have different angles? Yo, what the heck is this? That's crazy looking. What is this? Wow! What in the world? I, that's really good. That is really cool. Oh, that's actually a little freaky how good that is. I mean, like, I mean, wow. Um, I don't think this is our species. But this is a saw shark, but this is not our specific species, I am assuming. Um, that's really cool. Uh, let me go back to the chat. Sorry, I got really caught up in, into that. Like, so this is, this is, I guess, a 3D model that you can use for, like, a video game or something. This is by Viverna. So this is the model maker. And um, if, you, if you buy it, you can, I guess, use it for your game. Um... What? Uh, it's really good. That is really, really good. Made with Unreal Engine. Uh, wait, is that right? Or Blender? Or I don't know. No, I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about <laughs> as far as modeling goes. Oh, Native Unity 3D. Okay, great. That's 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 what it is. That's where it's from. Um. I wish it had the species name. It doesn't, oh, these are so cool. Uh, we, we won't be able to get through all these tonight, but like, these are really cool. 
So this is a kind of, I wonder if we can identify this. Um, this is definitely really good. This is definitely drawn from life. Like the details are definitely accurate enough where it's like, okay, that's a real, this guy, whoever made this did a good job and is drawing from like a real shark. So our challenge is, can we identify this to species? So that's a good way to kind of wrap up for tonight. So, um, yeah, like that's, this is the craziest, I've never seen like something like this before. So, um, we've got, uh, just called a soft shark. Let's see, let's see if we can get some details. If we, he's got pretty curved, sorry, tall and like falcate fins. I would not say this is a Japanese saw shark. Uh, the first thing I guess we got to check is the number of gill slits. He's got one, two, three, four, five. So this is Pristeophorus, probably. Um, damn. There's, there's a lot of them, though. There's a lot of different kinds. Oh boy, yeah, there's a lot of different kinds. We can do this. We can we can do this. This so <laughs> land. Okay, so this can either be a long-nosed salt shark, a Pristophorus serratus, a tropical salt shark, Pristophorus delicatus, a Japanese salt shark, Pristophorus japonicus, um, Lena's salt shark, Pristophorus lanai, African dwarf salt shark, Pristophorus. It's not that one. Actually, it's not that one because the fins are too tall. Um, Prince of Forest, Nancy I. The short nosed saw shark, Prince of Forest, Nudipinus. And then the Bahamas saw shark, Prince of Forest, Schroderi. Um, damn. I actually, I'm. I am. Um, it's not species specific. Good call. I might. I mean. I think the model isn't intentionally. But my question is. Every all these details look so good, like the number of teeth and the positioning of the eyes. I'm just curious if this. I wonder if this designer maybe scanned this from life, like somewhere. Like maybe he found this. Um, like I don't. Know, I don't know. Like, like it just looks too good. Like like it, like maybe he found this in like a fisheries collection or something and asked if he can scan it. It's really really good. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the thing though is those fins are very sharp looking, like, like they are quite sickle shaped. So, but he, but he's got the caudal fin, right? Like that lower caudal lobe. Does he have, <laughs> look, this thing is crazy. It's like doing battle. <laughs> um, let me see if I can get, uh, I can't get a good angle on. The, the keels um, what what an animal this is this is really really well done hmm I don't know I I, I am very curious I wonder I wonder if uh, I'm I'm gonna I like I don't I don't think we'll ever meet this part oh sorry almost uh, cancel um, I don't, I don't think we'll ever, uh, it's likely to be modeled after reference photos. Okay, so maybe, maybe, so maybe, do you think this might be an amalgamation of, like, different saw sharks? Like, he could have, like, kind of smushed them all together, maybe? That might, that might be what's going on. Um, what's really cool is, like, we could be, like, <laughs> um, Hey, Viverna, if you are ever watching this video, we think your model is awesome, and we would love it if, if, if this is based on a species, if you could share with us what species it is, um, like what kind of salt shark you might have modeled this off of, or if this is an, an amalgamation. Different species for his model. Okay, so he probably, probably used different species for his model. Um, if, like, like, okay, so either way, well done. This, this, that's really good. It, it, it's, it's... Uh, I didn't even see the other photos, like, like how good this is, but. Wow, that is so good. Yeah, the, uh, I won, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, 
five. Yeah, it's definitely some kind of pristine forest. That is super cool. I I'm kind I'm really blown away by that. That's that is wild. That is really really wild. But even the lighting, wow, it's really really good. So. Ooh, hey hey hey. Uh, we got we got one little hint though. Um, the barbels we have learned the barbels um, are closer to the mouth, so it's not gonna be. I mean, it's probably a generic saw shark, um, but let's just let's just knock out the long fin saw shark, just for fun, because uh, it's the 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 barbels on this model are closer to the mouth. Kind of like, kind of like the Japanese saw shark. I don't know if it is a Japanese saw shark, but like, that's we're gonna say it's closer to a Japanese saw shark than other kinds, just because the barbels, the positioning of the mustache. The mustache is close to the mouth, although that mustache looks very, very close to the mouth. But anyway, awesome, awesome model, but nothing's gonna beat the real thing. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna wrap up the stream with one last little video. Um, on our on our species so <laughs> but anyway um, so looks like Roy is just you and me tonight but I had a lot of fun catching up and and uh, going over the sharks um, or the, the salt shark with you uh, you have um, I think we're still slated to do the nurse shark next week but oh I don't know why my screen went a little weird just now sorry about that um, we're still slated to do the nurse shark next week but um, if you have any, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I, d I am huge, like, of the two, like, special effects are great and everything, but, like, I am huge into practical effects, like, Dark Knight Trilogy, I mean, that movie is amazing, and it's use of special effects, or th that, that saga is amazing, and it's use of special effects, so it's, like, they use it, that's not the primary focus, like, most of the stuff is, like, practical, and it's just, like, so cool, with, like, actual models, and, and, like, actual stuntmen and like yeah, I, I prefer that always you know so but anyway um any preferences just in case we don't do a nurse shark next week um any preferences for a backup shark um anything any species you might want to go over next week or because i'm pretty i'm pretty open like um we haven't it's cool to have this order down we've got I don't think we've done hexanchi forms yet. Crocodile shark. Okay, crocodile shark. That so crocodile shark. Let me let me make a note of that. Crocodile shark is our backup for the nurse shark. So um, if my um, buddy uh, is free next week, I think he should be. I think his project will be wrapped up. Uh, we'll do our first interview um, with the nurse shark and his work on that. And um, sorry, I just wanted to x out of here so we can. And on oh I've, I lost my picture okay uh okay we'll we'll end somewhere <laughs> um I close out too early anyway so we'll we'll wrap up um or, or next week we'll we'll probably do the nurse shark um it, it, I think I think my buddy's research will be wrapped up um on that so um so we'll we'll go ahead and do our first interview uh with him and the nurse shark. And then, just in case that falls through, we're gonna go into the crocodile shark. Um, and then, either way, crocodile shark is coming. So, uh, if we do nurse shark next week, the week after, totally gonna be crocodile shark. So, um, there's barely any info that I found about that one specifically. So, crocodile shark, um, kind of like a fun little teaser. That's one of the few I used to, um, yeah, like nurse shark's gonna be so much fun. Um, crocodile shark is one of the few sharks I used to. Um, what's the word? Like, I used to work in a marine science lab that had a lot of preserved specimens, and that was one of the rarest specimens that we had. Um, so that was, like, I think we only had one individual. Um, and, and this was at Virginia Institute of Marine Science. Um, they have one individual crocodile shark, which is extremely cool because I think that is... Firstly, that's kind of a rare species, and secondly, um, I think it's hard... We'll, we'll, we'll learn more next week because I might be... I might be um, I might be kind of confused on its range because I think it's a rare animal that is just in the Eastern Atlantic and specifically Africa, I think, like or parts of Africa. I think, and that's not very specific because Africa is huge. But like, I think that's 
just where it lives. Like, like I, I could be wrong on that, but we'll find out either next week or the week after. Um, it's coming. So, um, yeah, I, I'm actually really excited. Uh, it's going to be a, such a unique species. But uh, hopefully first we'll do the nurse shark. So um, with, with uh, Connor McDonald, it's going to be really, really cool to do like, an, an interview. We practice. We practice. I think we'll be able to do it. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Like, like, if, 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 if it goes wrong, it's still going to be on the phone. So, but, but hope you have a good, have rest, a good rest, rest of your week, week. and yeah. um, um, just, just like, like live, we live, can, we can uh, uh, do the um, uh, uh, self work together tonight, together so, tonight. so but take care, take care, hope hope you have a great rest of your week, and I will see you on next week's stream, so have a good night, have a good night.